Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Aquarium Live episode about animals and how we can train them. Now, we want to thank you for joining us on our Aquarium Online Academy as well. Those of you watching at home, you can participate with us, not just watch the program, but you get to text in questions to us here at the studio. Now, my friend over at the computer on the other side of the office will be able to help answer some of them, but also give me some questions to talk to you about online. So right here, 562 286 one eight three eight. You can text us questions about the animals that we're talking about today. Now, my young friends, make sure you have an adult's permission before you start texting into us because data uh, message and rates may apply to that. Now, today we're going to meet up with Captain Joe again, and we're going to talk about our seals and sea lions. A little bit about their characteristics, why are seals and sea lions so amazing, but then I'll be able to help talk to you all about how we train and work with the animals too, and we'll get to meet one of our animal trainers with Captain Joe behind the scenes. So, are you ready to catch up with Captain Joe and see what's going on? All right, let's see where he's at. What is he doing today? Where's Captain Joe? Hello everyone, oh. welcome to our seal and sea lion habitat. Today we're here to investigate the differences between these two very special marine mammals. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, Captain Joe, so let's learn a little bit more about seals versus sea lions. What are some differences? Now, have you ever seen seals and sea lions before? Hmm. They are very beautiful animals, and we have both species here, the California sea lion and the harbor seal. They live here locally, and there's a four things that generally make them different from each other, but let's see if we can learn a little bit more about what's so different with Captain Joe. Captain Joe, can you come back to the studio? What are you doing, Captain Joe? Teach us more about the seals and sea lions. Oh, oh he's coming in for a big picture. Hold on. For one thing, if you take a look at this sea lion, you can see that he has big flippers both in front and back. For another difference, look closely at the sides of the head. You see those? Those are ear flaps. Sea lions have external ear flaps just like us. Now take a look at this harbor seal, and do you see any differences? Little stubby flippers in the back, little stubby paws in the front, and look at the side of its head. No ear flaps. Seals do have ears, but the only thing they have to show for it on the outside are these little holes on the side of their head. No ear flaps for them. Did you get to see all the lovely differences between California sea lion or California sea lions and harbor seals? Well, let's see if we can review all right, real kids. quick. What? As part of every ocean ranger's training. We must all learn the majestic call of the California sea lion. I wasn't expecting that, Joe. Ready? Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> and now, the harbor seal. Uh, Captain Joe, I, I didn't actually hear anything. Are you sure you're doing a harbor seal call right there? Well, that is because the harbor seal is stealthy and quiet. Oh, well, that makes sense. Can you tell us more about, like, their natural habitat, where they live? Well, of course. All right. So, Captain Joe is going to head over to their habitat real quick. And we'll just cut to a video of the kelp forest habitat. Keep looking for characteristics that we can review in a little bit. Let's see what's going on in the kelp forest habitat. Sea lions tend to hunt in shallow water, both out in the open and in our local kelp forest, eating many different kinds of fish and squid, and they can hold their breath for about nine minutes. Now seals, on the other hand, although they enjoy those fish and squid, they also enjoy crab and shrimp on the bottom of the ocean floor, and they can hold their breaths for up to 30 minutes. Well, that was pretty great to watch them in their habitat. Now, I have my stuffed animal seal and sea lion friends to help us review some characteristics. So we learned that they're in the kelp forest habitat and that there's some very specific differences about their bodies. Now, these stuffed animal friends are not the right size. A sea lion would be much bigger than a harbor seal. So let's take a look at our sea lion friend first. The sea lion... Do we remember what Captain Joe said were differences between seals and sea lions? Let's make some quick observations of our little uh, cute stuffed animal friend here. I notice they have little ear flaps on the outside of their heads, just like we have ear flaps. My microphone's actually hanging on my ear flap today. And 
My sunglasses can rest on my ear flaps. Do sea lions wear sunglasses? No, they don't need sunglasses. But what else did we see on a sea lion? Hmm, let's take a look at our friend here. Uh, I see these big front flippers and these long back flippers that allow them to stand up when they're on the sand or the beach or the rocks or even in our habitat. They can stand up on their flippers. Hmm, what else do you notice? What color is our sea lion friend right here? It's kind of a dark brown color and they have that color all over their body. They're not multicolored. They're just kind of a brown shade. What else do we notice? Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, that's a good start. Let me pick up our seal stuffed animal friend. This one's a little bit bigger, so I have to be careful when I move him around. What do we notice about this seal? Hmm. Did you notice a color right away? I saw that first. There's a big difference in color. The seal is this dark and light kind of spotted or speckled pattern. And each seal is a little bit different in how these spots are on their body. We can tell the difference between our seals here at the aquarium because of the differences in their spots. Good observation. What else do we notice? Oh, their flippers are not the same size. So does it look like our seal friend can stand up on their flippers? Hmm. Not quite. The sea lion has long flippers. The seal does not. Do you remember that last little part that Joe was talking about? When we introduced first an RC line stuffed animal friend here? There's no ear flaps. So they still have ears. They can still hear. That's one of their five basic senses. But they don't have any external ear parts. So that is the main differences. And then you remember what Captain Joe was doing? Trying to mimic a sea lion call? Can you all pretend to be a sea lion at home? Give me your best sea lion impersonation. That was amazing. I am not a good sea lion impersonator, unfortunately. But the seals, they do make some noise. Now, Joe, he was being a little goofy, not really having any noise for a seal. But they do make noises. Have you ever heard of the raspberry noise? Where you just go... <sniffs> they do that. Sometimes they grunt and snort at you, too. One of the times that I was a volunteer aquarist, meaning I took care of some of the animals behind the scenes, I was cleaning stuff near where the sea lions were at and i didn't realize there was a seal that had snuck up next to where i was standing inside their space and it started sneezing and grunting at me scared me but it's not a big noise so i guess captain joe is right they are kind of stealthy and quiet now don't forget you can text in some questions to us here in the studio at 562-286-1838 now my friend dana is writing down a couple more questions that we can show off what do we have oh caden is asking if we can train sharks. Good question, Caden. So we covered some of the characteristics of the animals, the seals and sea lions, but we're gonna learn a little bit more about training in a little bit. But all the animals here at the aquarium are trained a small, at least a small amount. And sometimes it's involved in how or where they feed in their exhibit. So just like you or I learn how to do something, the animals in their exhibits will learn how to do that too. So we can train them where to eat, we can train them an object that they are going to eat near too. In Shark Lagoon, here's Shark Lagoon. It's a pretty big space and the sharks are pretty big in there too. Well, during a feeding session, what we do is we have a pole with a specific object or color on it. It could be like a white Frisbee or an orange plate. And that shark is gonna to go to the correct one. So this reef shark back here, isn't gonna get fed at the wrong location. We train them to feed in one spot and the other sharks from another spot. That way we know everybody's eating the right amount. So even the fish can be trained, not just the seals and the sea lions and the sea otters. Now, Charlotte was asking, can you hug a harbor seal? Oh, I wish they look like they're so huggable, aren't they, Charlotte? Well, unfortunately, I'm not one of the caretakers for the animals, so I'm not really allowed in their exhibit space. But the caretakers do go in and will touch their fur to make sure that they don't have any scratches or any injuries. But they don't really get to hug them. I'm not sure how much they like being hugged anyways. But if you ever see a seal or a sea lion out in their habitat, out in the ocean somewhere or on the beach, we want to avoid them. Now, it's not because we sh like they're mean or anything, but they're an animal that is not used to people. There's also rules about how we're supposed to stay a certain amount of distance away from marine mammals like seals and sea lions so that we can leave them alone and they can just be animals out in their habitat. 
we do have uh, some baby animals. I think we have a picture of somebody we can show you. Oh, here we go. So here's the lovable harbor seals. Now, that baby is super cute. I wish we could hug one, but they don't really want us to. And I'm not sure the seals would really like it if we did. But that's why I have my harbor seal plushie so I can give it all the hugs I want. Good question, Charlotte. All right, Abigail's curious. How do seals walk? That is a good question, Abigail. Well, remember we said they can't stand up on their limbs. So that means they use a different behavior. It's kind of like a worm slinky motion where they just kind of flop and bounce on their belly. I can't even do that. But seals do get to walk. Now, seals and sea lions are a lot more mobile or able to move than we might expect them to be since they live in the water a lot of the time, but they're on land for a large portion of the day. Sea lions can actually climb to great distances that you wouldn't think they would when they're on land. But the seals, see those shorter limbs? They're good for swimming, but the shorter limbs just really aren't good for walking around. Sea lions, there we go. There's a sea lion on his big flippers and fins. They can do quite a bit. So good question from Abigail. Now Amelia is asking, are they big? Well, we'll check in real soon with Captain Joe and one of the trainers here named Jimmy, and you'll get to see just how big Parker is next to a human. Last question before we go check in with Captain Joe. Carter is asking, oh, Carter and Wade, excuse me, Wade. Carter and Wade, do seals or sea lions live in California? Seals and sea lions of all different types live all over the world. We have mostly the California sea lion and the harbor seal here. We also have another type of sea lion that can live in our waters called the stellar sea lion. That's the largest of all the sea lion species or types of sea lions. We've seen them here very frequently, but not as often as the California sea lion. Now, there's another one that is extremely rare for us to find that usually lives farther south down in Mexico called the Guadalupe fur seal. It's a type of sea lion, and last summer, we saw a few of them out in the ocean. We were extremely excited because they're not normally found here, and we were unsure why they were hanging out this far north from where they're normally found. So we do get to see quite a few here in Southern California. All right, I bet it's been enough time for Captain Joe to go hang out with our training team. Is he up at our exhibit there, Amanda? Do you know if he's up there? Okay, we're going to get him up on the camera so you can see what Captain Joe's doing. Hello boys and girls, welcome back. I'm here with my friend Jimmy. He's a mammologist taking care of our sea lions, seals, and also our sea otters. And we have our special guest Parker here with us today. Good morning everybody, hi. Wave hi Parker, say hi. Good boy. We're gonna talk about our training. We train these animals so that we, they can participate in their health care. We can ask them to open their mouths. We can target and move our fingers over their eyes when we give them eye drops. We also want them to be physically fit and want them to think about the behavior. So when Parker sticks out his tongue at everybody like he's getting ready to do, tongue, tongue, good. Yeah. I say good, and then he gets excited because he knows he's gonna get a fish. That's herring, then we have capelin, and we also have squid. So he's very focused on the bucket because he knows he's gonna get what we call a reward. If you guys do something good, you may get a quarter. Um, if Joe's gonna be good, I might buy him lunch after we do this. Yeah. Training. But the training is really important because we want them to be comfortable with us. Good. Good boy. So there's a variety of behaviors that we do train them. Salute. Good. Good boy. So we ask for the behavior either verbally with our mouths or we do a hand signal. And so Joe's going to do a hand signal. He's going to get his right uh, hand and point to his ear. Look at Parker and point to your ear. Good boy. All right. And now if you get your right hand and shake your index finger back and forth, he's going to do a no. Do a Parker. Good. Good boy. Now stick your right thumb out. Good. Good boy. Good. Now look over there and give, give him a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Give Joe a kiss. Hey, come here. Parker, give me a big smooch. Thanks, Good. buddy. Good boy. So that's just a little bit about our training and having him sit here for the whole time that we're filming is a really good experience for him. And now, since he did so good, I'm going to have him um, lift up. Do you want to wave bye or wave? Say bye. You want to dance? Dance for him a little bit. Do some behaviors. Nice. Lift it up. Lift it up. Good oh boy. Now we're going to do a jackpot, meaning he did everything I wanted him to do. So I'm going to go back in the exhibit and give him all of his fish all at once. You awesome. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you so much, Jimmy. You're Thank welcome. you so much, bye. Parker. Say bye. Good boy. Let's go.
What an awesome time with Parker, our California sea lion. Boys and girls, we're going to send it back to you at the studio. Wow, that was amazing. Did you get to see all the great behaviors that we had trained Parker how to do? Now let's talk a little bit about the training itself. So what we noticed Parker doing is sometimes what sea lions do out in their habitat. But I don't know how many sea lions out in the ocean really know how to wave or stick their tongue out. So one of the things we use for training is to help monitor the animal's health. So all those things that Jimmy was doing with Parker help us make sure that Parker is healthy. And did you see Parker lift all the way up on his big front flippers? That was really cool. So their flippers are very powerful. But if Parker were sick or injured and he couldn't do some of those behaviors, that's a clear sign to our caretakers that they need to pay a little bit more attention and maybe even involve our vet doctor here at the aquarium. So these behaviors, we don't call them tricks because, well, they're not magicians, but also they're not here to just have fun. We want the animals to learn different behaviors and keep their minds sharp and learning. Just like you or I learn new things all the time and it's important to keep our brains active, it's the same thing for the animals. We want to keep their brains active so that they're constantly learning and able to think in their habitat too. So all these training habits and behaviors and things that we give to the animals are so that we can we can make sure they're eating enough, we can make sure that their bodies are healthy, their bodies are not injured. But what happens if an animal is injured or does need a visit from the doctor? Well, we're going to hang out with one of our vet techs for a minute. They're over at the vet hospital, but we'll check in at our Molina Animal Care Center. This is our full service vet hospital right here at the Aquarium of the Pacific that we use for all of our animals here at the aquarium. Uh, all right. So one quick question before we go into the clinic. Jake was asking, do seals sleep in water or land? Well, let's think about that. Hmm. They're mammals, just like us. They do sleep for a long period of the day. Hmm. They breathe air like we do because they're mammals. So is it easy for animals to sleep in the water that breathe air? It depends on what animal that is. Whales, they never come out on land. They're not really going to be out on land for any more than a couple of seconds if they do because they are supposed to be swimming in the ocean. Seals and sea lions, however, they do get up on land quite a bit. And because that they don't have this, because they don't have the same kind of breathing design that whales do, they have to sit on land in order to sleep. Some seals might sit in the water with their head just above the water line, but most of the time you'll see them sleeping on the beaches or the rocks. It's called hauling out. So they're just gonna lay out onto the rocks, sun themselves, and get warm. All right, let's head inside the clinic and learn a little bit about how we take care of animals here that get sick. Welcome Ocean Rangers. My name is Shara Seals and I'm here at the Molina Animal Care Center. This is our veterinary hospital for all of our animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Today I'm going to show you our pharmacy. We have a lot of the same medications that humans can get. Sometimes they might be in a pill. Sometimes they may even be liquid or drops. Today, we're gonna refill some eye drops for one of our animals. Here, let me show you. This is a prescription for Parker. He's one of our sea lions. Sometimes the animals may not wanna take their medications. So to make it easier, we train them. That way they can get a fish for reinforcement and we make it really positive and fun for them. ways to give our animals their medicine. If the medicine needs to go on the inside, then sometimes we can hide it in their food, like for fish and sharks. Sometimes we need to put it on the outside. So we can apply this ointment to a sea turtle shell to help it heal. Thanks for joining me, boys and girls. Now you know how our animals get their medicine. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Shara. Well, I have my seal and sea friend buddies here that we're hanging out. But that was really interesting how we get to take care of the animals. Did you get to see how Parker was getting eye drops? 
That is pretty impressive to train Parker to be able to sit still and be comfortable with getting eye drops. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not always comfortable with putting eye drops in my own eyes. Now imagine an 800 pound sea lion that wants to not sit still for that. It's really important for us to make sure that the animals are comfortable around the caretakers and the vet staff to make sure that we can do what we need to. Did you notice anything else that was special going on with what Shara was doing? There's a lot of medicine that we keep on hand to make sure that we can provide all the right veterinary and hospital care for our animals. That's really interesting. Now, we're getting a few more questions into the studio. They're writing them down for me right now. So once they're done writing them down, they are going to let me know what you're asking. Now, there's an, also an opportunity for you to interact with us and ask us questions, even if you're watching this after we aired it live. You can email us at live at lbaop.org. All right, Grayson is asking, are seals or sea lions fluffier or furrier? That's a good question. Did you notice anything about their fur when Shara was in the exhibit with them? They're not super fluffy like my stuffed animal friends here, or even like a sea otter, but they do have fur. It's just really short on their bodies. I heard from one of the caretakers, I know Jimmy personally, he's a good friend of mine, that they kind of feel like a wet piece of leather or almost just like a wet jacket. It's kind of smooth, but you can still tell that they're pretty wet. Now Paisley is asking, how long do sea lions live? That is a good question. Very common question we get is, how big do things get and how old do they live? It's an easy comparison that we can make to people. Well, sea lions, they might live around mm, 10 to 15 years, not usually as much in the ocean, but here at the aquarium because of our hospital care and that our caretakers are constantly making sure that they are safe and healthy, they can live a lot longer. Now, sea leal, the seals, however, they can live a lot longer. One of our seals here is, I think, almost 30 years old. That's pretty good age for one of our harbor seals. So she is our oldest animal, in, in, or at least our oldest mammal. And she is also a different kind of harbor seal. So there's two kinds of harbor seals that we have here at the aquarium. The Pacific harbor seal and she, our oldest harbor seal, is an Atlantic harbor seal. You ever get a chance to watch the harbor seals here at the aquarium? The harbor seals have a little bit different color. Remember we talked about the speckled color on them? Well, our oldest one, she has a lot more white speckles on her, and that means she is an Atlantic harbor seal. Now, Brett is asking, why do harbor seals have spots? I have to put you down for a minute. Hold on. All right, so let's take a look at our harbor seal. Harbor seals have the spots. What is a good ability that animals have to hide if they're big? What abilities would they have? Hmm. Let's pretend like you and I were playing hide and seek. I'm a little bit bigger. I need something special to help me hide. What if I covered myself in the branches or leaves of the bushes outside? Would I look similar to that? That's called camouflage. So the spots help give them camouflage. The spots help break up their outline. So if you were a predator or if you were prey, you may not be able to recognize that this is an animal swimming towards you. Now, Ruby's asking, what's the hardest behavior to train and what are their predators? Good question, Ruby. The hardest things to train might be really complex behaviors, things that they have never experienced or even seen before. Some of those other ones you saw Parker do, like stand all the way up on his front flippers, that's something a sea lion might do. But the seals and sea lions, they usually have a training regimen that a new thing, a new behavior might take a few days to a few weeks to learn how to do. It depends on how difficult it is and if it's adding to different behaviors they're already doing. One of the, my favorite behaviors that we had a sea lion train on when it was here was it would jump out of the water and come straight up out of the water and then kind of try to belly flop. And to make it a little bit more challenging for the sea lion, he learned how to bark in the middle of the belly flop. So they kept adding new things to this behavior. Well, it takes a little while to do that because we have to give them a command to go do a behavior and then they have to do it and get the reward. Now, if they don't do the behavior right away, that's okay. We can ask them to do it again. Well, if they still don't do it, we trade the behavior. So instead of just giving them the same thing to do that they aren't understanding, we give them something else to do and then reward them for it because that helps them feel like they are doing a good job. Okay, now Vivian was asking, how much food do sea lions eat? They eat quite a bit. So Parker, uh, right now is about 700-ish, almost 800 pounds. 
he's probably eating 15 to 20 pounds of food a day. Among all the mammals that we have, all the seals, the sea lions, and the sea otters, we're feeding them, all animals, over 200 pounds of food per day. That's a lot of food. But they have a big appetite, and they're big animals. All right, Emery is asking, what are baby seals and sea lions called? They're called pups, just like we consider like a baby dog is a puppy. Well, the pups of seals, sea lions, and sea otters, they kind of all get the same name. We've had a couple of baby seals born here at the aquarium. They are very cute, and they do like to hang out with mom and learn a lot from mom. Right now, we have Kaya on our exhibit. Kaya has a very silvery coat still, but if you ever get a chance to visit the Aquarium of the Pacific, you can try and find Kaya. She's also very playful, like most kids are, and I guess me too. They, she likes to play with all the different toys that are in the exhibit. Alistair is asking, do seals and sea lions get along? It would be very important for us to know that to make sure that it's okay for us to put them together in the same space. Now, our seals and sea lions do get along. We slowly introduce them to each other to make sure they don't mind each other. Out in the ocean, they live in the same area, in the same parts of the ocean. Now, they haul out or get out to go sleep on the beach in different areas. They eat the same food, but they probably won't hang out too much in close proximity or next to each other a whole lot. But they do live in the same area, they eat the same food, and they might haul out and sleep in the same beaches every once in a while. Now, here's some sea lions in a habitat. Remember what it's called? The kelp forest habitat. So seals and sea lions will group together in the same kind of animal. Lots of sea lions or lots of seals. But you don't often see them all hanging out together with both types. And that's okay. The ocean's a pretty big space. They have a lot of area that they can go play in. Now, Cash and Waylon are asking, do seals and sea lions stay with their family for life? Very interesting idea. So dolphins will stay in a family group called a pod. But the seals and the sea lions, they may hang out in the same area. They come back to the same beaches that they, the, where the males and the females will find a mate. But they don't really hang out in a group like this one all the time as a family unit. So a lot of marine mammals, when they're out in the ocean, not all, but a lot, do kind of meander or move away and just hang out on their own. There is a lot of space for the California sea lion or the harbor seal to live in. They may hang out or may stop by or sleep in a very similar habitat that they started with with their mom, but they generally don't stay as a family together. And that's okay. That's just what animals in the ocean do. All right. Well, that is a lot of amazing questions you have all asked me today. So much interest in our seals and sea lions here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I really appreciate all the lovely questions. Now, I think Captain Joe wanted to say goodbye, too. We better say goodbye to Captain Joe before our show is over today. Where's Captain Joe at? Oh, it's... He must be still behind the scenes helping clean up. That's okay. We don't want to bug him then. So from all of us here at our studio, I want to thank you all for joining us at Aquarium on our Aquarium Online Academy. Now remember, you can also email us questions. If you didn't get a chance to text in a question, you can also email us at live at lbaop.org, and we'll be sure to make, uh, make sure to answer your questions for you. Uh, if there's still some text questions coming in, we'll try to answer them for you. For all of our viewers out there, thank you so much for joining us. Now, don't forget, our Aquarium Online Academy has a lot of resources for all of our learners out there, even if you're watching at a later time. If you go to our website, there's a tab that's called Education. And in there, there are teacher and student resources. There's also a lot of information you can learn about and search on our website to learn more about our animals that live here. So, if you want more fun activities to do, don't worry, there's a lot on our website that you can have fun playing with. From here at the studio, thanks so much for watching with us, and enjoy the rest of your Thursday afternoon.